The Scrum Guide, the definitive guide to scrum the rules of the game. This publication was made available by the co-creators of Scrum, Ken Schraber and Jeff Sutherland. Huge shout out to them for making this available for free. Many people charge for knowledge. This is available to you for free at scrumguides.org under the creativecommons.org license. Part three, Scrum events. Prescribed events are used in Scrum to create regularity and to minimize the need for meetings not defined in Scrum. All events are time-boxed events such that every event has a maximum duration. Once a sprint begins, its duration is fixed and cannot be shortened or lengthened. The remaining events may end whenever the purpose of the event is achieved, ensuring an appropriate amount of time is spent without allowing waste in the process. Other than the sprint itself, which is a container for all other events, each event in Scrum is a formal opportunity to inspect and adapt something. These events are specifically designed to enable critical transparency and inspection. Failure to include any of these events results in reduced transparency and is a lost opportunity to inspect and adapt. The Sprint. The heart of Scrum is a sprint, a time box of one month or less, during which a done, usable, and potentially releasable product increment is created. Sprints have consistent durations throughout a development effort. A new sprint starts immediately after the conclusion of the previous sprint. Sprints contain and consist of the sprint planning, daily scrums, the development work, the sprint review, and the sprint retrospective. Quality goals do not decrease. No changes are made that would endanger the sprint goal. Scope may be clarified and renegotiated between the product owner and development team as Moyes learned. The sprint. Each sprint may be considered a project with no more than a month horizon. Like projects, sprints are used to accomplish something. Each sprint has a goal of what is to be built, a design and flexible plan that will guide building it, the work and the resultant product increment. Sprints are limited to one calendar month. When a sprint's horizon is too long, the definition of what is being built may change, complexity may rise, and risk may increase. Sprints enable predictability by ensuring inspection and adaptation of progress towards a sprint goal at least every calendar month. Sprints also limit risk to one calendar month of cost. Canceling a sprint. A sprint can be canceled before the sprint time box is over. Only the product owner has the authority to cancel the sprint, although he or she may do so under the influence from the stakeholders, the development team, or the scrum master. A sprint would be canceled if the sprint goal becomes obsolete. This might occur if the company changes direction or if market or technology conditions change. In general, a sprint should be canceled if it no longer makes sense given the circumstances, but due to the short duration of sprints, cancellation rarely makes sense. When a sprint is canceled, any completed and done product backlog items are reviewed. If part of the work is potentially releasable, the product owner typically accepts it. All incomplete product backlog items are re-estimated and put back on the product backlog. The work done on them depreciates quickly and must be frequently re-estimated. Sprint cancellations consume resources, since everyone regroups in another sprint planning to start another sprint. Sprint cancellations are often traumatic to the Scrum team and are very uncommon. Sprint planning. The work to be performed in the sprint is planned at the sprint planning. This plan is created by the collaborative work of the entire Scrum team. Sprint planning is time-boxed to a maximum of eight hours for a one-month sprint. For shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. The Scrum Master ensures that the event takes place and that attendants understand its purpose. The Scrum Master teaches the Scrum team to keep it within the time box. Sprint planning answers the following. What can be delivered in the increment resulting from the upcoming sprint? 
How will the work needed to deliver the increment be achieved? Topic 1. What can be done this sprint? The development team works to forecast the functionality that will be developed during the sprint. The product owner discusses the objective that the sprint should achieve and the product backlog items that, if completed in the sprint, would achieve the sprint goal. The entire Scrum team collaborates on understanding the work of the sprint. The input to this meeting is the product backlog, the latest product increment, projected capacity of the development team during the sprint, and past performance of the development team. The number of items selected from the product backlog for the sprint is solely up to the development team. Only the development team can assess what it can accomplish over the upcoming sprint. During sprint planning, the Scrum team also crafts a sprint goal. The sprint goal is an objective that will be met within the sprint through the implementation of the product backlog, and it provides guidance to the development team on why it is building the increment. Topic two, how will the chosen work get done? Having set the sprint goal and selected the product backlog items for the sprint, the development team decides how it will build this functionality into a done product increment during the sprint. The product backlog item selected for this sprint plus the plan for delivering them is called the sprint backlog. The development team usually starts by designing the system and the work needed to convert the product backlog into a working product increment. Work may be of varying size or estimated effort. However, work is planned during sprint planning for the development team to forecast what it believes it can do in the upcoming sprint. Work planned for the first days of the sprint by the development team is decomposed by the end of this meeting, often to units of one day or less. The development team self-organizes to understand the work in the sprint backlog, both during sprint planning and as needed throughout the sprint. The product owner can help to clarify the selected product backlog items and make trade-offs. If the development team determines it has too much or too little work, it may renegotiate the selected product backlog items with the product owner. The development team may also invite other people to attend to provide technical or domain advice. By the end of the sprint planning, the development team should be able to explain to the product owner and scrum master how it intends to work as a self-organizing team to accomplish the sprint goal and create the anticipated increment. Sprint goal. The sprint goal is an objective set for the sprint that can be met through the implementation of product backlog. It provides guidance to the development team on why it is building the increment. It is created during the sprint planning meeting. The sprint goal gives the development team some flexibility regarding the functionality implemented within the sprint. The selected backlog items deliver one coherent function, which can be the sprint goal. The sprint goal can be any other coherence that causes the development team to work together rather than on separate initiatives. As the development team works, it keeps the sprint goal in mind. In order to satisfy the sprint goal, it implements functionality and technology. If the work turns out to be different than the development team expected, they collaborate with the product owner to negotiate the scope of sprint backlog within the sprint. Daily Scrum. The Daily Scrum is a 15-minute time-boxed event for the development team. The Daily Scrum is held every day of the sprint. At it, the development team plans work for the next 24 hours. This optimizes team collaboration and performance by inspecting the work since the last Daily Scrum and forecasting upcoming sprint work. The Daily Scrum is held at the same time and place each day to reduce complexity. The development team uses the Daily Scrum to inspect progress towards the sprint goal and to inspect how progress is trending towards completing the work in the sprint backlog. The daily scrum optimizes the probability that the development team will meet the sprint goal. Every day, the development team should understand how it intends to work together as a self-organizing team to accomplish the sprint goal and create the anticipated increment by the end of the sprint.
And that concludes part three of the Scrum Guide. Next, we will continue from part two of the Daily Scrum.